Hey guys, it's a really cold, foggy morning here. Morning, Bella. And yes, she still has the grease stain on her forehead. Oh, what a big yawn. Let's go feed everybody. But first I'm gonna let you know what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, we're gonna, a few garden projects to do. One's more of an artsy garden project and then one's a traditional garden project. It's actually tulip planting time. Well, it's the end of the tulip planting period here in zone 9B, 10A. We plant tulips and pots mainly for a couple of reasons. They don't come back here. They're a one and done thing, like an annual. Uh, and also we have gophers and gophers will eat tulip bulbs where they won't eat a lot of other spring bulbs like daffodils, muscari, alliums. And so all of our planting of tulips is in pots and we plant them in a lasagna style, which I did on Next Level Gardening last year. I thought I'd share it here on this channel this year. And that is uh, planting multiple layers of bulbs in one pot so that you can get a long season of bloom out of them. The deeper they are, the later they're gonna bloom. And I think we had like almost a month of bloom last year in each pot, it was great. So a couple of the pots that I'm gonna plant in, this is one of them. Uh, I like them to be wider rather than deep, but not so shallow that I can't fit a few layers in there. The other pot is right here. I had my strawberry runners started, but they've rooted, so I can now transplant those and reuse this pot for tulips. I also bought these concrete pots. I guess they're concrete. There's some kind of earthenware. And so I'm gonna age those as well. And uh, so these will all be good. Now this one here is, excuse me, thank you. This one here is a little shallower. I may only get two layers of bulbs out of that. The thing with all of these pots is that they look new and I don't want that. I want them to look old, like they've been around for a long time. Now, in a lot of places, you can do this with yogurt uh, or just simply let it stay outside for a, a whole season. And maybe you have the moisture and the, the humidity and the correct temperatures, and you're gonna get that beautiful aged look, the white and the green. In a relatively dry Mediterranean climate like I have, that doesn't happen. This pot is at least 10 years old. And for the most part, it doesn't look aged at all. So we're gonna help that along and I'll show you how to do it. So let's get everybody fed and then we'll break into that project.
All right, so the materials needed, um, I got some artist, this, this was all from Hobby Lobby, but any craft store I'm sure would have it. Artist sponges, uh, and these are just cheap toll paints, acrylic paints, folk art paints. They're like a dollar something each. I got black, white, uh, coffee bean, any medium dark brown will work. And this is forest moss, any moss green color will work as well. Uh, four paper bowls, some paper towels, a cup of water, and of course our pots. I'm gonna set the GoPro up so you can get some close-up shots. All right, so I got a couple camera angles. You don't need to see my face, so I'm just gonna focus on the work. There's really no rhyme or reason or, or right or wrong way to do things. Um, I mean, when a pot gets aged, it's aged by the elements. And so it's gonna look, every pot's gonna look different. I'm gonna start with the white though, because I think the calcification comes before anything else. The moss is going to grow on top of that calcification, right? And that's way too much paint. So I'm going to get the sponge wet. I'm going to squeeze it all over here because we really want the paint to be thin. You do not want thick paint because you don't want to see like latex paint on the outside of this. You just want it to be very natural and soft. We'll go around the bottom first. Take a dry paper towel. Just kind of crumple it up. and just start rubbing it. We don't want that perfect line there, so if you want to get it a little bit wet, you can... You're almost wiping it all off or cleaning it off, and it's just the residue that stays. That's what you want. I'm gonna go around with another a little bit lighter. Somebody really wants attention. Haphazardly put it on with the sponge, wipe it with the paper towel or rag. You want to go lightly because you can always add more harder to take it away and having layers actually makes it look more authentic what you don't want to see is lines wiped into it or brushed onto it now if you're going for a mediterranean look uh, i would probably stop at the white and just let it be terracotta and white um, because the mediterranean is more dry this is mediterranean here uh, so we won't mainly get just the white aging it does take years though, so that's why I'm doing this. So now we'll get started on the uh, concrete pot. And I'm not going to use white. I don't think so. I'm not going to use white paint on this one because it's already pretty much white. I'm going to go in with the dark first and just create some texture. And then we'll go in and add some dirt and moss to it. I'm going to check and see how the. This is a little more contrasty than the terracotta. So we need a lot thinner paint there. So now I'm getting, it's a little bit darker than I wanted. So I think I will go back in with the white. Very thinned out though. No, I don't like that. I'm just gonna leave this in though. I'm not cutting out my mistakes because You'll see at the end, it's not going to matter much. So let's move on to brown. As you move your sponge around, dab it on different sides, turn it around just to get a more random variation in the pattern. Where I have this dark that I didn't like so much, I'm going to put a little bit thicker brown paint there. Not too thick.
just to mask it a bit. And just remember, you are looking very closely at your creation right now. And when it's got flowers in it, the pot is going to be the last thing people are looking at. So you don't have to worry. This is just giving this is just giving it character, which will make it look better in the long run. Even though people aren't concentrating it, they're going to pick it up subconsciously. That it's not just a you know a plastic pot sitting there. It's got some character to it. All right, now the moss. I think I want the green to be a little bit more apparent on this one because I think white would show up uh, moss would show up more on white anyway. actually like where the black was. I might add some more. All right, so before and after. I'm gonna finish up with all of these. Um, I'm not gonna seal them with anything because I still want them to maintain their porous structure. That's why you have concrete and terracotta so they can breathe. So over you know the years, this might fade a little bit, but that's okay. I think it might pick up the natural aging by then anyway. So I'm going to finish up with these and then we'll plant our tulip lasagnas. All right. So these are the three pots I'm going to be using, the, the cement pots. Uh, and these are the bulbs I'm going to be planting. These are from Color Blends. Um, they are not a sponsor of this video. I bought these myself. However, if you guys go and buy these, I will say I'm looking at these. They've been in the, the uh, fridge for a couple of months. And I think I only see one that's desiccated and the rest look nice and firm and plump and they've got their paper intact, most of them. So good job, Color Blends. Also, uh, I love that they have collections. So a blend of different, this one's called Sherbet and it's a, bl it's a blend. So it's not all the same tulip and they have blends that they put together for you. So you don't have to have an artistic eye. You just look at the picture and they tell you what tulips those are and they send them out in a package. So yeah, again, not sponsored, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. If you guys go and order from them, um, I'll put a link below. Let them know I sent you. Maybe we can get a discount code for next year. So these have been in the refrigerator for probably eight weeks. Um, if you're in zones eight and up, I'm a 9B10A. Uh, you have to give them a couple of months, six to eight weeks in the fridge so they can think they've had a winter. And then, you know, beginning to mid-January is a great time for us in more mild winters to plant these. When you have them in the refrigerator, make sure they're in like a crisper drawer and that there's no other fruit in there with them because fruit will cause the bulbs to ruin. As far as pot size, uh, you want something that's no deeper than 10 inches. Now this one is a bit deeper than 10 inches, so I'm gonna make sure that I bring the soil level up so that it's 10 inches from the top. And then you want a wide top, good 12 to 15 inches. Um, so this is a really perfect one. Uh, this is a little bit smaller around. We'll just get, be able to fit less tulips in it, that's all. So the first thing we're gonna do is put some potting soil in here. If it's a large hole, this is okay, but a larger hole than that, you wanna put a flat stone or some gravel just to cover it so all the potting soil doesn't escape. Some of this soil I just took out of that strawberry container. I'll take some of these roots out of here, but I'll put a layer then in the bottom, just about two inches. Well, for this one, I wanna bring it up to 10 inches, so I'm gonna put maybe three inches of this in here. And then we're gonna put our first layer of tulip bulbs. 
If you plant these in the ground, you can put them just a finger width apart, but in a pot, we want them to be able to grow up through each other. So we're gonna put them an inch and a half to two inches apart, pointy side up like that, then cover those over with potting soil, about two inches of potting soil over that. And the reason we're using old potting soil, and the reason I'm not fertilizing, if you've noticed, not putting any fertilizer in here, uh, these tulips are a one and done, like I mentioned. They have everything in the bulb that they need for the first year. If you're not keeping them after that and you're throwing them away, they don't need to be fertilized. They've got everything they need. Uh, same with, they don't need nutrients in potting soil either. So the only uh, caveat is you do not want to put potting soil in here that you've previ previously used on tulips. They can carry disease and you don't want that being passed to this batch. Okay, I'm gonna put our third layer in here. And you don't have to worry about, you know, staggering them from the ones below because they will find their way up through the layers to get out to the top. And then we'll just leave about an inch of space at the top between the top of the soil and the top of the pot. So while gophers can't get these in pots, if you have uh, squirrels, chipmunks, deer, those will all love to eat your tulips. And so something I did last year to keep the squirrels off of these is I just cut circles of chicken wire and put them in these pots and kind of held them down with some landscape staples. Uh, I don't have to do that this year because we have Bella. And ever since Bella arrived three months ago, I haven't seen one squirrel on our property. If you have deer, maybe keep these up closer to the house on your porch or something so that they won't dig around in here. I don't know, do deer dig? We don't have deer, but they will eat tulip bulbs. I know that much. Uh, for watering, you wanna keep them on the dry side. Kind of moist, but it, it's better to be dry than soaking wet. So if you have uh, a lot of rain, maybe keep them in a more sheltered location until they start to sprout up through the soil. Then you know they've got the root systems and the bulbs aren't gonna rot. I think that's it for the tulips. I'm gonna go put them over here on the side of the garage and once they start to sprout, I'll move them into place on the cottage steps. That was a fun project. I'm also glad it's done. I wanted to show you uh, something that I did a few days ago. If you remember in the last video, I was talking about taking out the extra piece of chain link, well, actually three sections of chain link between this property and the new property and putting a shed there um, or something. Well, I kind of got a wild hair and did it. Well, partially. So this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. So I cut down all the little saplings of eucalyptus that were there. I took down the chain link, the posts are still there, and I cut uh, down the saplings of eucalyptus that were here. So it's a lot more open. Now my original intent was to take down the chain link from there all the way over to this black pole right there. However, in getting all this cleared out, I think I'm gonna take down the sections all the way over to where I built that fence. Now you can kind of see where that is. Remember that steep hill that I built a fence on? So taking the fence down to right here, and then that fence goes down that way. So we're still totally fenced in, but I can get to this eucalyptus, which is only gonna get taller and bigger, and I can cut them off at the ground and let them sprout back and keep them for coppicing or using that wood for things in the garden. So here's the vegetable garden. That's where we just were. So I eventually want to have a path that's going to be able to go along where these logs are. And Bill's going to get these logs out of here. And so that path will go from our Mediterranean entertaining area, past the vegetable garden, and on into the new side of the property. Now, as far as what we're doing out here, I originally planned for these steps and this path to continue on straight out and then curving around following the fence line and the orchard being on the right side of that path. The problem is I'm always worried about sight lines and what I can see, what I can't see from different locations before I put in anything permanent. So coming over here to the future entertaining area, seating area for the Mediterranean garden and looking back across the space, 
I want that to be kind of looking like countryside over there, lavender, grasses, things like that. Um, and those trees are gonna cover a good majority of the view from over here. So I'm pivoting to where I'm putting the orchard on the other side. So here's that wall I built in the last video. And coming down here to the end, this is where the English garden that's gonna be this way is going to end. There'll be a, a path up straight up that way. On the right side of that path now, all in this area will be the orchard. This down here now is, is still gonna be an extension of the Mediterranean garden. It's gonna be kind of a gravel garden with Mediterranean plants, California natives, things like that. And then on this side of the path, up that way is just going to be, like I said, grasses, lavenders, things that give the impression of an Italian or south of France countryside. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you'll try the, uh, the terracotta project or the cement pot project. And if you do, let me know down below. I'll see you guys next time.